Day number one at Sun and Fun, and it's the sun is coming out here to be part of the Sun and Fun. A little windy today, but we don't mind that because we're playing with airplanes. I'm Dan Johnson talking to Gary Sadowitz, the representative in the USA for this airplane, which I'm guessing you've never seen. Gary, welcome, first of all. Your first visit to Sun and Fun, I believe. Hey, thank you, Dan. Yeah, excellent. And uh, tell me a little bit about your background with this airplane and why you're representing this airplane. Then we'll get into the airplane itself. Uh, so I'm originally from South Africa, where the aircraft is manufactured. Uh, I had a very good friend of mine. He bought one of them and just fell in love with it. It's so much fun to fly. He called me up and said, hey, you, you've got to get yourself one of these. So uh, I got in touch with the manufacturer. We, we kind of, I got involved, started flying. I just loved it. And long story short, yeah, we are today with uh, battle in the USA. Well, I said I wrote about this on my website earlier, and I got quite a few, I got a lot of responses, but I got quite a few people that said, oh, I have one, it's the greatest thing in the world. Either they're very enthusiastic about the brand, or they genuinely like it, and I suspect the latter based on how they word their statements. But, so, how long has this airplane been flying now? Let's do, now let's do a little bit of history about the airplane, because you said it started as something else, so I don't want the whole long detail about that, but bring me up to speed on where this thing came from. So the origins of the Bad Hawk is out of the um, Australia, Australia, the Phantom. Um, South Africa was just a very big market for it, and uh, the importer there just became the greatest amount of users in the world. They took over the Phantom, and then over the years, they evolved it to become the Bad Hawk. I see. So Phantom is how it started, and then this. And you said at first, now, a lot of people who come up and look at this airplane go, there's one thing that gets your attention right away, which is unusual because it's clear, but it says canopy. Wow. And I said I'd watch some of your videos where there's a camera, I don't know, back there somewhere looking forward. And I went, man, I'm not seeing any optical distortion. You know, making, making these is not easy to make them look that way. I mean, that sure. costs some money and that takes some skill and equipment. Uh, that's not the way it always was, though. No, it used to have a, a, a hinge down the middle and they had kind of two doors, yeah, that would open up that you're getting that way. But now with the canopy, it's almost like a helicopter. You've got a phenomenal view of, of when you're going. And that's why it's such a good airplane for, it's got some uh, commercial uses where they do livestock, uh, pipeline control. They do, they do a huge amount of uh, conservation in Africa. Yeah, I noticed on the website, there's a lot of work orientation to the airplane. A lot of what they're talking about. We hear about anti-poaching in, in Africa a lot. Right. I understand that, but there were many other uses he said a guy has uh, one that he goes up and checks out volcanoes with. Right, so, so this is the Rotex 100 and the 9112, the 912. You can also put the 915 on. 915? Like, yeah. Wow. And, and it just gives us that, that uh, rate of climb. He climbs up, he actually does some um, work with a volcano and they kind of take readings all the time. I see. So he climbs up to 14, 15,000 feet. So he gets up there quickly, does what he has to do and come back down. Yeah, wow. They do crop spraying with it. So there's a lot of different applications. And then most importantly, just having fun. I mean, it's just a fun airplane. Okay, so uh, Bantam went to South Africa, became the Bathawk. About when did this happen? Uh, it, it was through the, the late 80s, 90s, but I would say in, in, in 2000, really, when the Bathawk started uh, involved. So I'm cheating a little bit because I found some of this on the website. But I thought, okay, this airplane's been around for a while. This is not some newcomer to the field. It's new to America. Correct. It's correct. new to Sun and Fun, but this is not a new design. Not at all. Man. I mean, they're, they're governments in Africa that actually buy these because it's, you know, cost of, cost of running them. And they're just so efficient and, and reliable. Yeah, I saw a lot of pictures of some, apparently some ceremony where a lot of government guys in suits and whatnot, military people. Uh, but here, as I sit here, I'm, I'm like an air molecule now looking at this airplane and approaching it. And I can see there's quite a, a significant bow to the canopy, calling it a canopy instead of a windscreen because it's more like a canopy. But, it, I mean, you're not going to get hardly any wind effect inside this canopy, are you? Right, that's correct. You, you don't get much wind at all. It's just kind of if you put your head back and lean right back, you kind of feel the wind come here. But if you're in your normal flying position, there's very little wind. Okay. So it would be comfortable in colder climates, for example. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I've flown it in, in high 40s, low 50s, kind of put in our little ski mark, and then it's, you don't even... So, Gary, you're bringing these in now, I understand, pretty much as I see it here. What's the category that you're falling under to, to bring an airplane like this in without having to build? 
Right, so these come in complete. Obviously, you take the wings off, they come in a container. Um, but they, they're coming in as experimental exhibits. Okay. And that, that's how we're flying them at the moment. Um, but, uh, you know, really, lead times, you, you're typically looking at about a three to six months, depending on uh, shipping and stuff like that. Yeah, shipping is a big question right now. Almost everybody knows that, but assuming no, nothing bad happens, more bad happens, I should say, I suppose, three to six months is a reasonable expectation of delivery time. Right, so it's about a 90-day build and then about a 90-day Okay, well, that's pretty good. How many of these are flying everywhere? Uh, I'd say oh, approximately. A, right, so if we take the Bantam out, there's probably about 150 of the new, oh, okay. the new ones, but there's about 400 of them. Uh, Okay, so I've actually quite a quite a quite a good history and going back twenty or thirty years here. I mean, right, right. I'm new airplane. And, and currently, the the manufacturing side has to just on the world about a hundred in after. Oh wow! Yeah, so there's, wow. there's a lot of things. Well, you know, the bad news about that is it might take you longer to get one. The good news about it is the company's going to be more solid. Right, right. And they'll be there to support you, which is very important once you buy the thing. Right. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how it's built. What 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 the construction elements of the airplane are, Gary. Tell me about that. Right. So it's tube frame, uh, aluminium all the way through, and then this is a sail um, that they use. It kind of goes on like a sock, and then it gets strapped across on the top there. Obviously, on the on the elevators and the rudders, it's uh, wrapped around. But it's a uh, fabric cloth, well, a sail cloth that they use. Okay, I'm looking down here at the landing gear going, that's not all aluminum, I don't think, is it? No, no, so that, that, that's actually a Kevlar uh, one new, one new piece uh, undercarriage. Single piece all the way across. Single piece tire to tire, tire is one piece. Uh, tire to tire is one piece, a little bit of reinforcing around the, the tires. Uh, it's uh, disc brakes, and uh, this kind of gives a little bit of cushion when, when you do that. A little, bit, a little bit of give. And I'm guessing that's probably a change since the old Bantam days. Of, of, I'm pretty sure that that's the case because that would logic logically be so. But given the amount of work that I see being this aircraft being used for in South Africa, and the fact that it's been around 20 or 30 years, I'm guessing that this has really evolved to this point over time. Right. Is that right? And what the manufacturer does is Let's do a few uh, uh, specifications, like I want to hear about stall speed, tell me about cruise speed, tell me about climb rates. Okay, so stall speed on this is about 36 knots, cruise speed is about 77 knots. Um, climb rate you can get uh, 4,500 depending on uh, who you've got in there. I mean, with, with 100 horsepower by myself, I can get easier, 1,000, 1,200, and kind of keep that going. What is the empty weight of the aircraft as she sits right here? She's right at about 580. 580. 580 okay. pounds. All right. And uh, what is its maximum takeoff rate? So, so uh, it's, it's kept, kept at about 1,200. She's got a little, a little over 600 pounds. Of yeah, yeah you got a lot of useful load in yeah. there. And people are going to go, well, but, you know, what do you need all that useful load for? Well, of course, you've got the two seats. You can see real well. And it looks like a bulkhead back there. That's more Dacron. But behind that, besides the bearing to the tail and whatnot, you said you could put stuff back there. Oh, yeah. The glass with golf clubs with, with a you know, weekend bag in there. And, and, uh, and like, what is the access to that? So there's, there's a compartment on the, on the right-hand side with two zippers. That open oh, yeah. I see it back there. Okay. 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 So you zipper it open. You put your stuff in there. You secure it down a little bit so it doesn't go back to the tail. But, uh, uh, and make sure you got your uh, golf club uh, cap on. Yeah, two clubs put it right in the back. <laughs> Let's shift gears now and talk a little bit about control mechanism. Okay. I see a center stick. Wow. Um, tell me more about that. First of all, center stick, and it, is it all push pull cables? Yeah, it's all push pull cables. Teleflex, we often say, but it's a push rod kind Correct. of arrangement, a flexible push rod. Correct. Uh, this is the flapper runs. Okay. So you've got a flap control. On ah, that red handle? handle? That red handle's in okay. flap, so you can kind of get, you got a 45, you can half flap to it. Are they notches or is it infinite? Uh, so it's infinite. So you just okay. know it's put it where you want it. Where you want it. Um, and then so the, the elevators and the, and the ailerons are working with the stick. The riders are foot controls of the rudder pedal. Okay. And steering. 
And uh, rudder pedals to the tail, or is that cable? That's cable. Okay, that's usually cable. All right, so center stick and uh, dual control then. Got pedals on both sides? Correct. How about brakes? Brakes, uh, brakes you've got uh, the handle. On the I see it on the front of the stick there. Okay. So it's both brakes at the same time. Throttles up to your side, and you've got two. Ah, okay, so I see a red handle on both sides. That's the throttle. Okay. And, uh, yeah, set the pedals on both sides. So. All right, I'll... My friend that I was talking about, he's 62, and we, we're not driving so Cool. Well, a lot of great information about Bat Hawk, uh, but for people that want to know more, see more pictures, talk to you, maybe order, where do we send them on the web, Gary? So, so our contact information is on our website, but my email address is info at bathawkusa.com. So, Bathawkusa.com is the website. Here we can find out lots more about the aircraft and how to get it. Very good. Find more about all kinds of affordable aviation from Bat Hawk to Zenith and everything in between on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Gary Sadowitz and myself here at Sun Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Bob. I have not had the pleasure, uh, but from what I heard in the Here at Sun and Fun, we run into one of our good friends from another show. I'm Dan Johnson talking to Chris Collins of the Midwest LSA Expo. It's great to see you here, Chris. Great to see you guys, too. You found me <laughs> trying to escape. Caught you walking by, but we yeah. had to ask some questions about the upcoming Midwest LSA Expo. And you found the right time on the calendar. We know that the last few years have been excellent. So. Worked out pretty good. Yes, excellent. So coming up again this year, you're doing it again, of course. Um, uh, give me a couple of names that are coming to the show for you. Oh, uh, well, for instance, last night I was looking through the new AOPA magazine and turned to the very back and there was an ad for Bristol and it actually had Osh and then MVN on it. So <laughs> all that's right. pretty exciting, you know, pretty to cool. read that in your motel room. You, you know, bet, so, that's very nice. So all the guys that are there, um, you know, of course, Jabiru and, and Zenith and UL Power. i got to mention Robert on UL Power. Of course. The hit of the show. Um, just the, the list is long. Um, it's hard to come up with right now on camera sure, nervous right. like this in front of everybody with all the AOPA people across the hall looking at us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There is a flock of people back there, and they're watching to see what they um, You know, just trying to bring it off the top of my mind, the Aeroprac guy. Yeah, Dennis, we know we're leaving some you know, people yeah, out. Yes, I'm a, I'm but, a, uh, and they'll all be mad at me. But the point is you got a good crop of uh, airplanes that will come again, and uh, we'll do the show for those days. And... For, for what uh, video man Dave here and I do at the show, yours is one of the very, very best for us to come and do in-flight videos of airplanes and so forth. So another reason for people to come and exhibit at your show, beside the public they reach out to, is the opportunity to get some attention. I get asked time and time again what's new for the show, and there really isn't anything new. What we do best is giving the customer access to the skies. No hassles whatsoever. Just and go it, fly. It is the easiest place. Yes. There's a lot of great shows, and I'm not putting mm -hmm. any of the other ones down because they're, we appreciate what they're doing too, but your airport is so wide open, so easy to get out and go take people for a flight. And you know what? Shows like this are great. We love Sun and Fun. We love Oshkosh. But there's so many people, it's hard to kind of get around, and you can't get somebody's attention. If I walk up here, we're standing right in front of Continental Motors. If I walked in there right now, I'd have to wait to talk to somebody, right. maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then I kind of go, well, you know, I think I'll walk somewhere else, and I never end up talking to them. Exactly. That doesn't happen at your show. No, not at all. It, you, you have the undivided attention of all the, the exhibitors there and comparison shop and comparison fly. And I'm going to brag on Chris a little bit because everybody likes to go to the show, partly because of this man right here, the team you run. Yeah, I know you got a bunch of people that mm -hmm. help you. It's not yep. just you doing everything. But you're out there, I'll say cracking the whip. You're a much nicer guy than that to be a whip cracker. But you keep everything moving. It happens. You're so accommodating. Everybody likes to go to the show just because they get well treated, you know. And good things go where they're well treated. Well, we have that Midwestern as atmosphere. Everybody is excited to see the guests. And, and it's just an easy thing for us to do. And a, an army of volunteers wearing orange shirts like the one I have on and cater to all the needs. And you do that very well. 
For folks that don't know about it, give us a position on the map where Mount Vernon sure. is. Because a lot of people don't know where Mount Vernon so, is, but they know some other places. The southern end of the state, the intersection of I-57 and I-64, equidistant between St. Louis, Missouri, and Evansville, Indiana. Okay. You know, so we have a, a southern climate more than the northern part of the state. Yeah, and the it's weather's a, usually early pretty good. September mm -hmm. has usually been very good, not so burning hot like it can be down right. here, and yet nice weather for flying, which is, of course, the main attraction. Uh, how about from Chicago? Chicago's about four and a half hours okay, from and the southern Okay, that's pretty much straight mm -hmm. north, straight right? South. Or you're straight south to, yes. from them. So for that huge population there. But basically, anybody around the whole Midwest, you're very central. Yeah, you're not eight, that far. We're eight hours drive from 50% of the United States population. Is that right? Yeah, I don't that's know if I've ever heard that. Economic fact, development but... stats that, ah, they, okay. that people like me uh, spurn out. <laughs> um, someone wants to fly in to uh, commercially fly into St. Louis. It's just an hour and 20 minute drive over to us. That's really what I've easy. often done. So yes. and easy to get vehicles and it zipped right over. It's not bad drive at all. And if you do fly your general aviation aircraft, we have shuttles to and from the hotels. And they're you got free. a lot of hotels there and they're yeah. reasonably mm -hmm. priced. So you're not going to spend a fortune. And then we also have camping on the field, which is free. We have showers on the field and we're very equipped for things like this. Beautiful. And so what happens if a whole bunch of airplanes fly in? You got any room for them all? Plenty of room. Plenty <laughs> of room. Got 10 acres of concrete ramp space, and then we got a whole other end on the other end, end of the airport that we can position airplanes and tram everybody to the show. Great stuff. So once again, Midwest LSA Expo, it's now part of the aviation calendar. All right, give us a web address where we can find out more and get the dates again and like that. MidwestLSAExpo.com. All right, Chris, we're glad we caught you walking by here. You're out talking to vendors and trying to encourage more people yet to come to the show. That's correct. All right, well, that's good. So all you folks that are watching, uh, early September, there's no other good shows right then. Uh, come, come to the Midwest LSA Expo at Mount Vernon, Illinois, an hour east of St. Louis, approximately, and uh, catch that show. You get to go for flights there like you basically can't do anywhere else. We get to do that. We love that. But all the individuals that come get to do the same thing. Yes. Good stuff, Chris. Keep um, keep on doing good. Thank you, Dan. So for more about the Midwest LSA Expo, I always give it lots of coverage because I really love the show. And there's always so much to do there for me that uh, you can find a lot of that and all kinds of affordable aviation on ByDanJohnson.com.